Hey, what's up? In this video, I'd like to share with you how you can crush the French defense playing white. Now, the French defense is one of the top three, I believe, most played openings of all where black plays pawn e6, aiming to play pawn d5 on the next move and to challenge you in the center of the board. Now, here there is a very interesting setup of white, which is both solid and yet highly aggressive with many tricks along the way. This is the two knight system. I actually played it for many years. It's been my main weapon against the French defense. And I'd say up to the level of a Fida Master, it worked really well for me. And then when I started facing Masters and Grandmasters more frequently, I stopped playing this. It started to work less good, but prior to that level, it worked wonders for me. Now, what's the point of the two knights uh, variation instead of the main line where white pushes d4 earlier in the game? Well, actually, you're gonna play that move anyway. And it's gonna transpose into the main variations of the French defense, but you cut off some other options of black that you don't wanna study that's it now what is black going to do right here they may consider pushing the pawn forward pawn d4 but it actually backfires because this pawn is too far away from the rest of the black's underdeveloped army and after knight e2 your both knights are targeting this pawn and actually it's more of a liability for black it now requires to be defended and it it's actually bad for black so a better option for black instead of pushing the pawn forward would be going knight f6 and most of the french players play that move, knight f6, they attack your pawn in the center, now you push pawn e5, knight d7, and finally you play pawn d4, and now we're transposed into the classical uh, French defense. Black plays c5, and here you've got a very interesting variation, bishop g5, right here. It's actually, you're gonna benefit a lot from this because you're gonna win many games, but also the following variations are just fascinating, so you're gonna love to see them. Anyway, all right, now after bishop g5, you're attacking the queen, so obviously black will need to address that threat somehow. Now, how would they do this? First of all, let me share with you that I've just checked in the database the highest rated game played in this variation, and let me show you what it is. So the black player, just for reference, it's against Spironovich, against Sidlak. Both of them are grandmasters. The black player is the European individual champion. He's got a medal in the um, chess Olympic games, etc. Right? Quite strong players. Black plays Bishop E7 here. Now white took here on a sound, black responded with queen takes, so, so far everything looks natural, but all of a sudden your knight sneaks to b5 with the dual threat of either knight c7, which would be a fork to the king and the rook in the corner, or knight d6, check to the king, putting your knight to an extremely strong square, forcing the king to move and to lose the right of castle. Both threats are extremely unpleasant for black, and there is nothing black can do to stop you know, them both. So in the game, black just castled, and basically after knight c7, black could safely resign right here. It's move 9, just the beginning of the game, and you can see that a strong grand master was basically defeated. He played on some more moves, but the position is already completely lost, because black is losing the rook without any real compensation whatsoever. So it's just to address the question whether traps or like tricky opening variations work. They, they do work, that's for sure, even against a strong grandmaster, such as in this case. Of course, you can become a strong player just by following, you know, tricky opening lines, but if you do them, to, if you do both things together, if you improve your chest level, but you also study some interesting opening variations, then it can work really well for you, why not? All right, so that's how you will win many of your games as well, just exactly like that. But let's see if there is a stronger option for black, because it definitely exists. All right, so let's come back to the starting position of this variation where white just played bishop g5, hitting the queen, and we already know that bishop e7 really fails badly for black. Therefore, the correct response for black would be queen to b6. And it looks quite strong, because not only black moves their queen out of the attack, but it also puts pressure here and possibly along this diagonal, right, so that they can maybe challenge you in the center of the board as well. But you just take here on c5, and it First, it looks really, really strong for black to, instead of just recapturing the pawn, instead grabbing this pawn on b2 with massive destruction. So the queen collected the pawn, attacks the knight, this pawn on c5 is too weak and gonna be captured by black anyway on the next move. Looks like white just messed up and black is gonna pick up all these weak pawns on the next moves. But it's actually a trap, because here you play knight b5, basically the same move. As we just saw what was winning in the previous version, it wins here just as well, even though the line is different. Now, finally enough, you're threatening knight c7, which is not just a fork to the king of rook, but it's actually checkmate. Notice that this diagonal is controlled, so knight c7 would, you know, 
pick up this you know nice little checkmate for black. Another potential problem that black has, apart from knight c's on fork, is that their queen on b2 looks a bit trapped there, because it doesn't have that many squares to go to, and maybe black would be concerned that you can somehow trap the queen over there of rook b1 or something like that. So an ideal solution for black to both of the threats seems to play queen b4 check, and then capture the pawn, right? So right now this is check to the king, and if you defend it somehow, Queen can save the return back with, you know, while collecting two pawns along the way. Looks like, again, Black outsmarted you and Black is probably winning here. But there is the following variation, which is absolutely inhuman, I gotta say. Because you're playing Bishop e3, attacking the Queen. Now the only square for the Queen to go to would be Queen to c6. And now all of a sudden you start with this hunt for the Queen. And this is an extremely rare case because queen can sometimes be trapped somewhere in the corner, but you can never trap a queen in the middle of the board, but that's what you're going to be doing right here. Now the queen is attacked, and it still has to guard the c7 score, by the way, because knight c7 is still a threat. Therefore, black will play something like queen to b6, but then there is a final combo, knight takes e6, and this is so brutal. You completely destroy the black's position, and the queen is under the attack, both of your, of your knights are aiming to this c7 square and you just completely overwhelm black with all of these threats. So what is likely to happen is that the queen will capture this knight, but then it'll fail to knight c7, a really nasty fork to the king, queen and rook, to all the most valuable pieces of black. So on the next move you're gonna win the queen and win the game. Now this is so brutal where black played seemingly good moves but was destroyed so badly that, yeah, I mean... If you feel any compassion for your opponent, don't play this variation. Alright, let's come back to this turn position once again. Bishop g5 attacks the queen. The queen plays to b6, so we take here on c5. And we already know that queen takes b2 looks very tempting for black, but in fact, after knight to b5, quite backfires because, yeah, that's a pretty strong threat. Now, we already know that trying to retrieve with the black's queen leads to very unfavorable outcomes. But what if black simply plays knight a6, just to cover this c7 square, and it looks all good for black. Black is still attacking all these weak pawns of white, and yeah, the queen can now be trapped, because if white tries rook b1, it's almost trapped, but it can simply win another pawn on a2, and right now it looks like black is just doing wonderful. But you play rook a1, kind of pretending like you just want to repeat the position and get a draw, but after queen b2, all of a sudden there is a subtle difference. Now, due to the absence of this pawn on a2, the a-file is opened, and you've got a crush and move rook takes a6, eliminating the defender. Funnily enough, in the majority of the games played in this opening, black played b takes a6, and, you know, they're defenseless anyway against the c7 uh, threat, but after that, knight c7 delivers this elegant checkmate, and you can very well play it in your own game, so that's one of the nice outcomes of this opening variation. Alright, let's come back a couple moves. Now, we have analyzed an, a number of times where queen takes b2 failed due to knight going to b5, threatening fork. Therefore, instead of queen takes b2, the correct move for black would be bishop takes c5, just bringing the bishop out, keeping all safe and secure, also threatening bishop takes f2, by the way. So, because of that threat, you're gonna play queen to d2. And hey, what if black now captures this pawn on b2? Still looks good, looks good for black, attacks the rook in this case. Now, since the rook is a tank, we're playing rook b1, attacking the queen, queen a3 is forced, and guess what? Knight b5, still coming, and still winning, <laughs> due to all the same ideas. You're attacking hero the queen, and as well as threatening knight c7. So the variation is slightly different, but the idea is all the same. If queen goes somewhere, then just knight c7, which not just a check to the king, but it's also a fork to the rook, therefore you're gonna win the rook. Now, the only move to delay that would be queen takes a2, but in this case, you first play it in between move knight c7 check, instead of moving your rook immediately, forcing the king to move to lose the right of castle, and after that, since the rook is under the attack, you just move it to safety, and the point is, first of all, the black's king is stuck in the middle, but the main point is that the rook is got captured in the corner, you're gonna win this on the next move, and you're gonna win the game. That's another like interesting line where the variation is slightly different, but the winning idea is all the same, this knight b5, knight to c7. It's very simple actually, but it works. 
All right, let's come back and let's see what else black can play here. It may seem at first like some cheap trick for white, just hoping for this fork. But you see that in numerous variations, it, it just works and it's quite sudden and annoying for black. Therefore, I wouldn't certainly say that it's just low level tactics against some unexperienced opponent. And now let's check a really amazing variation. Pawn takes c5, bishop takes the correct move for black, threatening these pawns. So we're playing queen to d2. Now we already know that queen to b2 failed, just as we saw, you play rook b1 and all the same move knight b5. Now if you're facing a higher level opponent, they may notice an interesting tactics here, that black can actually first take here on f2, deflecting your queen, and after queen takes, they now grab this pawn on b2 with a double attack to the rook and the knight. Therefore, now you don't have any time for any kind of knight b5 stuff or to, to move your rook. And it seems like black kind of outsmarted you, they tricked you. Now they won the pawn, now they're gonna pick up some more piece and the other pawns are weak. So yeah, it looks like black is winning. But you've got a really brilliant follow-up here. You play king d2, letting black to win the rook. So queen takes a1 is forced. And then all of a sudden you play bishop b5, another out of this world move where you let black to grab another rook. Like a really fascinating game in the style of old masters or Mihul Tal, like, like that's such a beauty. And the queen is forced to move because if not, it's been attacked by the rook anyway. So the queen will have to move and accept the sacrifice. But now we'll see the point of putting our bishop to b5. It pulls the pin and you can sneak with the queen to c5 thanks to the pin, so the knight cannot move because it's pinned by the light square bishop from over here. And you just put together this nice checkmating pattern for queen to be brought to e7 and to deliver a nice checkmate. It also threatens queen takes c8 checkmate just as well, so you even have two checkmating threats. And it's astonishing that it works and black has no sufficient defense and you're getting a winning position. Black can play the final check here, king takes g2 and king c1, but you run away with your king there but your checkmate and threats are still alive, so you're gonna win. This is absolutely mind-boggling, and it wins. Alright, it's time for the spoiler. It can be all that good for white, right? Black has to have a good defense here. And here it is, black just shouldn't be seduced by this b2 pawn, or they shouldn't get seduced by the bishop f2 tactics, instead they just need to develop knight c6, playing the normal development moves. And in that case, it's much harder to find a good continuation for white, but you can still play, in this case, another knight move. Not knight b5, in this case it's not a threat, but knight a4, delivering this fork to the queen and the bishop. And in this case, you don't aim to checkmate or do anything tricky, you just want to win a bishop against a knight, getting a two bishops advantage. And in the vast majority of your players, of your opponents, will just move the queen away, letting you grab the, the bishop and get a positional advantage of having two bishops, which is nice. So that's how most of your games will, will go. Now, if you're facing a more experienced opponent, or stronger opponent, they may find the most challenging variation for a white, which is bishop takes f2 in this position. And this position works. Now, queen takes, and the idea is that black is gonna go queen b4, which is, in this case, an attack to the king and an attack to the knight on a4. You can play pawn c3 just to cover uh, your king, and after queen takes a4, at first, you know, at first glance, it looks like black's just winning. They got a pawn, uh, the e5 pawn is also weak, and, you know, you couldn't really achieve anything. Looks like black is just doing really great, they're, they are winning. But if you are just having a little bit deeper understanding of the position, you'll see that you still have a lot of compensation for the sacrifice pawn. And what I recommend is that you just go bishop e2, and you try to castle kingside, and as a matter of the fact, you're getting a great position here. Let's say black takes here on e5, or doesn't really matter, if not, you're gonna castle anyway. Let's say they take here, and you take there as well, and then you castle. So black is currently two pawns up, but the problem with black is that they are underdeveloped, most of their pieces are still in their original squares, the king is not safe at all in the middle of the board, and even if it castles, it's still far away from safety, because if you look at the white pieces, they are all somewhat pointing towards the king side right now. The queen is pointing, you know, there across the f-pile. Also, your queen is ready to be brought somewhere here, attack the knight, attack along this diagonal in case black castles, and maybe the, with the 
exception of the rook on e a1, all the other pieces of yours are closer to the king side, ready to attack. And you can easily bring the rook into play by playing rook e1. And you have a lot of ideas how to attack the black's king. Whether it stands there in the center or whether it castles, you have a lot of ways to attack it. So I would say that you have a lot of compensation here. And in a real game, especially in Blitz, certainly not easy for a black to figure out what to do here. For example, if they castle, which is the most natural way, then you play bishop e7, attacking the rook, and once it moves, you play bishop d6, attacking this knight over here, and all of a sudden black is lost, because the knight cannot go away, or else you'll grab this pawn on f7, attack the king, the rook, and you win. For example, if they try f6, defending the knight that way, first of all, you can take it here, pawn takes, then queen f7, check, anyway, and after king h8, there is queen f8, nice little combo leading to this beautiful checkmate. It's just one of the variations, but whatever black does, you'll have a lot of attacking ideas anyway. If you want to know a similarly tricky and powerful opening for black against the white's first move pony 4, wait no further and click over there. There is a real beauty that I published recently. Also, if you really enjoy this content, then you may consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell so that you will always be notified because we've got a lot more coming your way. Always appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Have a great day.